Welcome to part five of our tabletop gaming house build. Uh, I added a bunch of joint compound for, from dry, you know, joint, drywall joint compound to give it a nice plaster look on the inside and outside before I actually coated the whole thing in a Mod Podge and black acrylic paint mix. This is something I learned from Black Magic Craft. It kind of hardens and seals the foam to protect it and make it a little bit more resilient. I went ahead and applied this on the interior and exterior. Not only does it harden the foam a little bit, it also makes it easier to paint. It's a little bit better when you have a nice darker color underneath, in my opinion, than painting directly onto the light blue foam. So after I got it all coated, it actually changed the overall feel of the house and made it a bit more spooky, as you can see here. It was time to finally add some color, something I was really looking forward to after such a long build. So I started with a nice poopy brown color for the roof shingles. These will darken up quite a bit once you get the black wash that we'll put over it at the end. Uh, a good way to save your paints if you've mixed them is to just seal whatever container you put them in. I used masking tape and it worked wonderfully. So I applied this poopy brown color over everything that needed it, which was a lot. I mixed all the colors of the rainbow from the 1970s to achieve this nice brown color for the roof and I had to mix quite a bit of it because there was so much to paint that was this color. Also it ended up taking two coats on everything that had this poopy brown color on it. The reason that was the case is because everything needed to be applied with a, a bit of water to make sure that the paint didn't fill in any of the fine details that I put on there with the wire brush for the wood texture. That would have been a disaster, so I took the time and ended up doing two coats. I then used a nice medium gray, extra medium, for all the stone parts, and a nun's favorite color of light tan for all of the plastery bits. This ended up taking two coats as well because it is a light color being painted over a very dark color. I used a nice li even lighter gray for all of the more like concrete areas uh, that I had created and this would kind of differentiate these pieces from the stone pieces. I made some little fireplaces that I that use this color as well and they are adorable. I didn't want the interior wood to blend with all the other woods so I added a bit of red just to that poopy brown making it a nice bloody poopy brown. Anyway I then made a nice lighter brick color. Yeah just brick. Uh, because I knew it would get darkened quite a bit when we added a wash over it. It was then time to add a bit of variety to these flat colors I put on, so I added that nice light gray to the medium gray on a few select stones, followed by a really dark greenish black color, followed by a nice baby food green color, and then I followed that up with a kind of gross but pretty puke color of yellow and this actually creates a lot of variety once the wash goes over they're not as dramatic I also applied the medium gray on the light gray stones again with that pukey yellow on some of those cornerstones as well to add some variance to the brick I took the brick red and made it darker and filled it in on the more recessed bricks I also added a little bit of pink to some of them for more variation and here it is without the wash the wash is really going to tone down a lot of those, and here's an example of uh, just a raw color, dry brushed, and then the top one is dry brushed with the wash on top. And that was the next step, was dry brushing. And then I used the nun's favorite color for that on everything. I like this rounder, kind of softer brush when applying my dry brush. It just works really well. It holds, dry, it holds the paint on it really well when it's dry, and then the application goes very smoothly. Um, I actually use this color over everything. I don't change my dry brush color on the entire house. I use it on the roof shingles and the wood. I use it on the stone. I use it on the brick. Everything. It's just been a really go-to color for me and I really really like it. You want to avoid using a bright white but this really really light tan, I think this is parchment by Folk Art, uh, has been really excellent and like I said I've been using it in all of my dry brushings.
Here are my doors. Uh, they turned out really well. You can see those long hinges that I mentioned in the previous video. Uh, they ended up working out really great and I was really pleased with how these turned out. So much so that I made some additional doors for a different project with them. And then it was finally time for the wash. This is a wash that uh, of a mix that I got from, I can't remember the guy's name. Uh, I got it from Jeremy on Black Magic Craft from a guy that he got it from. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll link it down in the description, but putting a nice wash over everything just really kind of, for one, kind of dulls down all those bright colors that I added, but it also just fills in all of the texture and detail that I spent so much time putting into this piece that it was just a really, really satisfying moment to get all of this on my, on my piece. When I put the wash on all of like the plaster, quote unquote, bits, I wanted it to look like it was darker on the edges and in the corners. So whenever I applied this, I took a Q-tip and kind of rubbed out the middle. The Q-tip didn't work super great, so I used my finger and then eventually I ended up using, I believe, a paper towel to, to do it because the Q-tips didn't go very far. But it kind of worked, kind of didn't. I gave up on it because it didn't really make a difference to me at the end. So we're at the end of this video. Uh, the next video will be finalizing everything and I'll be doing some of the doors and a few other embellishments, but please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.